by working with businesses, foundations, governments, and organizations, United Arts of Central Florida is supporting cultural endeavors across four counties. But with funding more difficult to attain than ever, are the arts in jeopardy? We'll ask United Arts President and CEO Flora Maria Garcia next on Metro Center Outlook. This program is made possible by funding from the UCF Metro Center, where government leaders, business executives, and academic experts come together to discuss major issues facing the state of Florida. Hello everyone, welcome to Metro Center Outlook. I'm Diane Trees, director of the UCF Metro Center and your host for Metro Center Outlook. With more than three decades of experience in arts administration, United Arts President and CEO Flora Maria Garcia has advocated for the symbiotic relationship between the arts and community and economic development. She joins us today to talk about how United Arts is investing in the community and the role the arts play in business, tourism, and education. Flora Maria, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me. You left Atlanta in 2012, yes. where you headed the Arts and Culture Coalition. What drew you to Orlando? Well, over the last 30 years, overall, I've run grant-making agencies, and the Metro Atlanta Arts and Culture Co Coalition was a public policy advocacy organization, and I missed being uh, much more directly involved with cultural organizations in the role of a grant maker. So this agency is very similar to the, the one that I ran in Fort Worth, Texas. And so coming to a smaller community was appealing to me. Um, the leadership of United Arts was, was very active and really engaged in the community. And it was a very broad base of civic and business leaders. And so I really love the can-do attitude of, of that leadership. And I wanted to come here to make a contribution. It's still a smaller type town yeah. atmosphere with it. With the scarce resources that we've had, Politicians and civic leaders differ sometimes as to the value in the arts. Why are they so important? The arts are important on so many levels. Um, they really help attract and retain high-level business people and industries to a community. Uh, in Atlanta, for example, we had three CEOs of international companies write an editorial about why art and culture was really important for them uh, in determining relocation because they are educated, uh, high-level people that want to know that you are moving to a civilized community that has a real, a real wide array of cultural offerings. So from an economic development standpoint, from an education standpoint, from a tourism standpoint, the arts touch our community in so many different ways. So you say that arts and culture do go hand in hand with economic development? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, there was an economic impact study done here in Central Florida last year by our agency. We do one every five years and what we discovered was that the arts contribute 264 million dollars per year to the local economy. So that's significant economic impact. Well I was impact. looking at that and it said I believe almost 9,000 jobs as well. Right. Exactly. Were you surprised with those figures? No, because I've seen that um, every community that I've worked, we've always done economic impact studies, uh, and I see the numbers, uh, and so I'm a real believer of that. Um, also, one of the, the research pieces that we're doing in addition to this economic impact study is we're looking at the creative industry in Central Florida because of the um, animation industry. The I was going to ask you, creative, what were you saying? Right. There are for-profit industries like the theme parks employ so many creatives, the Imagineers, engineers, people that make creative experiences happen for the public. And so we wanted to look at creative industry. How many businesses do we have in Central Florida that focus on the cre creativity and how many people do they employ? The crossover effects with them. We're still studying the numbers. We're, we're waiting for a couple of the parks to give us their employee numbers, but I believe once we see those employment figures for Central Florida, we are going to be extremely competitive as a region that focuses on creativity. That will be very interesting to read when, when that comes out because I was looking at the report. Well, you know that Mayor, Mayor Jacobs is doing a branding campaign right now for Central Florida and I think we're going to be able to tout the fact that we are the center of creativity in the Southwest. Let's talk about 
contributing to United Arts. Mm -hmm. How does even one dollar, what is the impact on the local economy with that kind of contribution? Well, United Arts is interesting because we are one-stop shopping for the arts. Donors give to United Arts because they know that we have a very rigorous review process for our cultural institutions. We really focus on the bottom line. Their dollars are matched. Um, and and we are making a significant difference in the uh, by giving groups operating support, which is some of the hardest dollars to raise. Lots of people like to give money for projects, uh, but operating support to keep the doors open, to keep the lights on, is very difficult. And so, by providing operating support to the cultural institutions, it makes a huge difference in their ability to produce great product. I was reading, I believe it said that even a contribution as small as one dollar has a ripple effect yes. of up to ten dollars as yes. people go to restaurants and right. after dinner drinks and, and things like that around the cultural events. Yeah, the overall number um, that, that I'm comfortable with is for every dollar you contribute in the arts an additional thirteen dollars are generated in economic activity. Oh, that's really yeah. high. I was so reading it's 10. very high. Yeah. Yes. And also, if we talk about tourism, um, when you look at the cultural tourist, they usually spend twice as much as a regular tourist in a community. They stay longer and spend twice the amount of money. So those are important people for us to be looking at and attracting to this area. So the regional development and the tourism as a direct factor into yes. what you're doing now. Yeah, very much so. Um, we're very fortunate in Central Florida that a portion of the tourism tax goes to support the arts. And so there is a direct tie between cultural activity and tourism. Let's talk a little bit about the ties with education. How do yes. schools and the arts tie in together? We have a remarkable contract with the Orange County Public School Children that makes uh, in excess, provides in excess of 600,000 cultural experiences for children in Orange County to be able to experience the arts, either in school, in school performances or out of school experiences. We, our program provides uh, the opportunity for small children to go to the ballet to see a live performance and to go to the Philharmonic, which is really exciting. And many of them might never have the opportunity to do that. Well, that's how I got started in the arts, by the way. I always like to tell this story. When I was in the sixth grade, my, um, my teacher was the daughter of the conductor of the Richmond Symphony Orchestra and she took the class on a field trip to the Richmond Symphony and that was my aha moment. Did Is you want to be in the orchestra? No, I didn't <laughs> want to be in the orchestra. I just was so overwhelmed by this amazing music that it just rolled over me and it was so inspirational and so uplifting that I thought, I want to be involved in something like this. It really just put a spark of excitement in me about the arts and from then on, I really was paying, started paying attention to the arts. I actually became a visual artist, um, but it just instilled a love of the arts and a passion for the arts that's been a, a part of my life. And, and I hope that by making it possible for children to experience live performing arts events, here that, that one or two children are affected in the way that I was. Well, the live performance, like you say, it's, it's such a difference. Even with the, the, the video that, and clarity that we have now, it's different when it's, when it's live. Well, it is, it is very different. It's exciting. A, a live theater experience. This morning I was at the Orlando Museum of Art for a photo shoot, and it, they had about uh, 75 children come in to see the glass exhibit and you should have seen their faces. They were so fabulous. Um, they were walking around the artwork, talking all at the same time. The docents were explaining what the different pieces were. To be careful. Were. It, it was, well, actually, they were really good. They were very well behaved. Um, they were very respectful because they know they're in a special place. Um, and I also thought how wonderful it was to have these volunteers, these docents that spend time with children, really giving them an opportunity to learn about the art and experience something really, truly unique. Now, you've said that employers look for people who are innovative and creative. Yes. And yet, why, are, why don't we put more value on that aspect? A lot of arts and, and create, they are creative. Right. So why doesn't that bring more to the workforce. That's that's an element that should be emphasized more. I completely agree. I think that the business community and the cultural community need to connect connect those dots. And and we probably aren't doing our job in helping the business community realize that the arts engender creativity. It seems 
normal or something that's very obvious, but there's a gap between arts and culture and a lot of business leaders who want creative thinking. Two years ago, uh, IBM completed a study where they interviewed the 500 CEOs around the country of major corporations, and they asked them, what is the number one criteria you look for in hiring high-level employees? And guess what they said? Creativity. Creativity. And, right. and they are lacking employees. People are not coming out of schools being able to think creatively. Well then let me ask you, with a discussion now with STEM, yes. and there's even potentially tiering tuition right. to favor STEM curriculum, how does that way of thinking, where do the arts fit in? They're missing, they're missing one very important component in STEM, and that is the arts, and it really should be STEAM. I've heard that yeah. expression before, yes. Yeah. And it's a wonderful enhancement um, because, you, you know, just think about inventors. What are inventors all about? They're about crea creativity and thinking outside of the box. And if we don't instill the, the whole uh, notion of creativity in, in our children growing up, then, then we don't have good thinkers. And that's what we need um, to make innovation happen. I think what happens in school, everybody starts out being creative. But as soon as the teacher starts you to tell so? you, I do, I absolutely do. Haven't you seen children with a sense of wonder, children naturally dancing, or who, who wants to paint on the walls? When you're a little kid, you take your Crayola out and you want to put pictures on the walls. <laughs> we are naturally creative, absolutely. But what happens is we get into the school system and the teacher starts to tell you to start drawing within the lines. And the logical thinking and yeah. scientific and method And that's where over. we start closing up and we're not, we're not encouraged to be creative or to ask questions or, or to challenge. And, and I think that's what the arts do for, for children is they, they really open their minds to possibility. Let's talk a little bit about the economic downturn. Yes. How has that impacted the arts community? It's, it's had a serious impact on the arts community and it really started long ago before this current economic downturn. It started with Katrina. When Katrina hit, there was a shift in support of the arts to focusing on social services. Okay, that and makes sense. And we have sense. not recovered since then. I was reading that um, prior to the recession that uh, corporate donations were on a downward trend. That's right. And I hadn't put the two and two together. Well, right. How is United Arts, how are you managing then with less corporate dollars? It's tough. And I will tell you, it goes all the way back to when I was in Fort Worth. We had two major corporations in town, Radio Shack and Pier One. And both of those companies were very hard hit. And they st one of the first things they did was started to cut support for the arts. What we're doing now is we're looking at a broader pool of <coughs> funders, smaller amounts of money from a larger pool of people. So we, we're really shifting the way that United Arts has raised money in the past. We're going to be introducing a new web-based uh, giving program called Power to Give that started in Charlotte about a year ago when the CEO of Charlotte, who was new and young, he was 35, he's 35 years old, said, Hmm. He looked at the numbers and he, he saw arts patrons, very few percentage of arts, arts people attending the arts are actually donors. About 86% of people who go to cultural events don't give. So he was thinking, how do I tap into this? How do this? you engage them? And he created a program. They researched a program very similar to Kickstarter, um, which is uh, an online giving program for for-profit initiatives, but, but Power to Give is a nonprofit initiative, and it will allow our cultural organizations to put projects on, online uh, of up to $10,000 with a 90-day funding cycle. So the groups can be as creative as they want to be. The, the projects are really, anybody can give uh, $5, $10, $25 until the 10, 000, up to $10,000 goal is met, and it's quick turnaround with a lot of engagement. What we're seeing now is that people want to be participative in what they give to, they want to know where their dollars go, and they want to have some kind of emotional connection to their gift. And I think this new program is going to do that. Well, let me ask you then, um, the Community Foundation of Central Florida just completed a report. Yes. And they found that a lot of the local um, arts groups have difficulties with business plans and management yes. practices. How are, how are you dealing with this? 
It's, um, it's a really great question. Um, we're looking at the notion of developing a capacity building program, <clears throat> which focuses on technical assistance to cultural organizations. We, we partnered with a community foundation on doing a presentation with their findings to the greater community. And some of the issues were, were pretty shocking to me because I worked with cultural organizations for 30 years. The fact that many groups don't have strategic plans because they're in crisis mode. They're dealing with keeping the doors open, doing those programs day to day. It's very hard to sit down when you're in crisis mode and plan long term. And we've but been in crisis mode especially for a long from, time. Yes. Yeah. And so it's, but it's very important for organizations to be able to look to the future and think strategically about how are they going to get there. So part of our conversation now with funders is can we as a funding community come together, pool resources, and target certain areas that are really going to move the needle for the cultural community forward? Now, 2012 marked the first time that United Arts has not met its annual fundraising right. goal. How are you moving forward now? Well, I think part of it was that the fact that it took a long time to replace the CEO. There was no strong development staff also at the time, and we are now fully staffed and moving forward very successfully and very aggressively. In fact, our, we just initiated an early bird fundraising campaign that is 30% of where it was last year, ahead of where it was last well, year. I know that that's part of one of the initiatives. Yes. You came in May of 2012, right. and, and you've put in place several things. Yes, I move quickly. <laughs> It's well, my and, nature. a development <laughs> officer was one of those. Yes, and, and she's you had terrific. two task forces for marketing. Right. And we did a we did a grant making task force that really looked at the way we give money away and streamlined our processes. It was about 15, 18 people that had been involved in our grant making process, um, funders as well that had sat on our panels, reviewed how we gave away money, and then I work with staff to really evaluate is the is is the program working effectively and if not what do we need to do to change it and so we brought forward about 20 recommendations to the task force over a period of time they approved those recommendations and we're now implementing and in the same way marketing task force is being led by Jill Estorino who is a vice president of marketing for Disney she's a fabulous mind she brought a lot of her peers to the table uh, and have looked at the way we market ourselves our branding um, how are we messaging who are we messaging to? Critical things to know, yeah. especially who are with the resources donors and later. how do we talk to them? So, and that's one of the other benefits of living here in Central Florida. The talent pool is incredible. A lot of people were really amazingly talented, giving of their time and expertise to us, and I really value that's that. That's good to hear. Yeah. Has the mission for United Arts changed? Is it um, is it beyond the scope of fundraising? From from what you say, it, yeah. it, it's much broader than that. I think it is changing. Uh, our first priority is to raise more money uh, to give to cultural organizations and individual artists and that that is always going to be the core priority but we have been going through a strategic plan planning process looking toward the future looking at who we are what do we do what should we be doing what are best practices in other communities that we could be emulating um, and what do we want to be when we grow up you said that um, it's surprising that an area the size of Central Florida and one at this level of sophistication lacks endowments for the arts. Yes. Are we behind in supporting the yes. arts here? Yes, Central Florida is behind, and, and people are <laughs> going to get was, all that was a quick very answer, mad yes. at me at the, <laughs> saying this, but it's the truth. I mean, these are these are the is part of the research that the Community Foundation uh, dis discovered. It's not um, it, it's not a real secret that our large institutions are under endowed. Uh, and I've been talking to people about that. Why is that? Because uh, a lot of these organizations have been around for 30 years. So an organization like that with a budget of five to eight million dollars really should be farther ahead in fiscal stability, financial stability. And what, what I'm told, which I think is really interesting and unique to this place, is that this is a transient community. Because we serve 55 million tourists per year, there's a lot of people moving into the community, a lot of people moving out of the community, and if you ask someone where, where is home that lives here, it's rarely. they say someplace else. Right. And so there is very not, seasonal. It's very seasonal. There's not um, that vested in that vested interest and investment in a community that you have in, in other places where people have been here for a long time and really want to see the community 
grow and thrive. So it'll be our job to really think about those things and see if there's a way that we can evolve and engage the residents into really taking ownership of this community. Well, again, there's been concern expressed that there's insufficient philanthropic funds to adequately support both a performing arts center and local arts groups. What are your thoughts on that? We're already behind in it and still in a recessional period. Well, I, I don't agree that there's insufficient funds. This is a very wealthy community and we, ha we have a lot of wealth here. It's just not been tapped into. And That's what a big we, difference then. Absolutely. What we need to do is, is expand the pie and we need to expand the scope of philanthropy. Um, there is a lot of wealth in a number of areas of the community that really people just haven't looked at or explored and I believe there's room for both. Um, the, the Performing Arts Center is a hugely important piece of... That's of, good to hear. It's an addition, a wonderful addition to this community and it's long overdue. Um, so, and I think what that's going to do is bring amazing pr productions to Orlando. It's going to raise the visibility of the arts. I think everyone will benefit. I know a lot of our cultural groups are nervous right now because they don't really know what the costs are going to be about going well, There's a lot into of people DFA. nervous about They're nervous. businesses in general. But you know, um, change is always difficult. New things are sometimes hard for communities to accept. But in all the places that I've been where new performing halls have been built. It's been very successful. It's been a huge benefit to the community. It raises awareness. It grows the audiences for everybody, and it's a win-win for every. It's going to have a huge revitalizing effect on downtown. And for downtown area. Just think about all those people going to downtown. They have to eat someplace. They're going to park. Some people may spend uh, spend the night in some of the downtown hotels. It's going to attract people from outside the Central Florida area. A whole ripple effect with it's, it. It will have a, a huge ripple effect. Well, with the last couple of years being so difficult for arts and culture in terms of development and fundraising. Do you envision 2013 as being a year where things are going to come back or are we still going to go at a little slower pace and hopefully pick up? I think things are coming back. Um, based on the Community Foundation's research on trends, it looks like the economy is slowly coming slowly back, inching slowly yes. inching back. I think that fundraising is going to be better for the cultural institutions. I think the fact that we are expanding the way we raise money, new ways, bringing new ways of raising money, we're going to attract a lot more people. We're actually looking at uh, engaging social service organizations in our Power to Give program. Social service groups that want to do projects with arts organizations and individual artists. So oh, that's still, unique. It is unique. And just think about bringing a whole new set of eyes that uh, have in the past supported social service looking at our cultural institutions. Right. So you can share the resources pool right. and it's a win-win situation. It's a win -win that's for very unique. Very yeah. good. I'm excited yes. about that. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Well, you're very welcome. So glad to be here. I've been talking about the role the arts play in economic development with Flora Maria Garcia, President and CEO of United Arts of Central Florida. Thank you for tuning in to UCF Metro Center Outlook. Until next time, I'm Diane Trees. This program was made possible by funding from the UCF Metro Center, where government leaders, business executives, and academic experts come together to discuss major issues facing the state of Florida.